Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Lynn and today I'll be working with the new Layered Fleur Bouquet Slimlines collection from Becca Vegan and I have two uh, uh, pieces of scrap paper where I've just done a little bit of inking with my Distress Oxides. I was going for a bit of an ombre but I think on the purple, my two purples are not quite different enough so it's a little bit hard to um to see the transition from light to dark but on this uh here i've gone light to dark from left to right and on the second piece of scrap paper i went light to dark from uh top to bottom so i wanted to just play around see what um what i liked better how I liked that ombre and I like um, just die cutting from these uh, sort of inked up um, little swatches because then you don't have to worry about die cutting out each of these individual pieces because the single die plate actually has all of the layers that you need to build up each variation of the flower and today I'm working with the tulip flower. So you get three different um, floral shapes that differ in how open or how closed the flower is. So I think it's super convenient to have all of the different dyes on one plate so that you can run it through the one time and get all of the pieces that you need to layer this up and assemble each one. And I'll assemble each each of the three, although I believe there will be a, a visual guide so that you know which piece um, goes where. And on the die plate itself, each die cut piece is actually labeled as well. And so you basically assemble it in the order that it's numbered. And, um, and I found that you basically assemble kind of staggered you know, left to right. But honestly, since these petals are all, I think, pretty much the same scale, you can really just mix and match and create your own your own floral um, shapes as well. There are a few that are really specific and are meant to layer directly on top of one another. And you'll see those. Those are the really thin pieces there. But otherwise, uh, the petals, I think you can really just interchange and create different, uh, shapes if you want. So I think it's a very, it's a very, um, kind of versatile set in that way because you don't have to strictly assemble it the way that the instructions tell you to. This, uh, set of two flowers here, I've, uh, this is the one that's ombre from, um, top to bottom. So I've positioned it so that the darker color is at the bottom here. And I think I think I like this one better. Although I think they both both looks are um are nice. So I think it's just uh subject to what you prefer. And you could always just die cut this from white and then color with maybe your alcohol markers or do watercoloring if you want. You could die cut from solid color cardstock too. I just think that it's a little bit harder to do that because all of the individual dies um, are pretty close to one another on the die plate itself. So I think it would be hard to do in one pass. I think if you were going to die cut from solid color cardstock, you might need to do it in multiple passes, but there's lots of different options for how to use these. And the die set does include stems and leaves as well. And you'll see on my sheet here, I do have a second flower, which I'll craft with in a, in a separate video. Um, so this magnetic sheet um, ha has actually a combination of both and there are some additional pieces on the back as well. And I love that um, with this one, uh, it was a little bit easier for the leaves to die cut them from 
uh, solid color cardstock, so I went with that because there's only, I think, three separate pieces on that one, and so um, I think you can really interchange what's what's uh, the highlight and what's the shadow. So I just die cut it a couple times and then um, interchange those pieces to get that layered effect. And now that I have my tulip assembled, I'll uh, assemble the border. So in this collection, there are a couple or a few different slimline um, borders. This is the half bracket. So it's got this lovely ornate border to it and it's um it's a half border so you can you can use it on its own and and just die cut um half of the slimline as you see here or you can uh flip it around and get this exact pattern uh, mirrored on the other side as well. It is a rather intricate die, so um, so you may need to run it through your machine a couple times, or maybe add a shim um, to to get that to die cut through completely. There is a, there's actually two separate dies for this. So one, as you can still see on my sheet there, is uh, an outline die and they'll cut a backing plate. And the one I'm using just die cuts um, into your card, that lovely pattern. And so it doesn't actually cut out the design completely, which I like. I like using it like this. It gives you a really nice lacy border. And in this particular set, there's also a, a word die as well. And that one reads, um, uh, I pick you, which is great with all of the florals. And from this extra bit of um, inking that I did, I'm actually going to white heat emboss my sentiment. So I'm going, I just picked out birthday wishes. And that's from an older stamp set. If it's still available, I'll um, try to link to it in the description box below along with everything else that I used in this video. And so I'll clear, I did make sure to put um, a little bit of baby powder on this to really make sure that the uh, panel was f um, not going to uh, pick up the embossing powder because with your oxide inks and pigment inks, they do take they do take a little bit of time to dry, so so I just powdered over that entire surface so that it didn't accidentally um, pick up or or uh, you know adhere any more embossing powder than I wanted. And so I'll use that as my sentiment. And now that all of the elements are complete, I'll start to assemble my slimline card. So this is cut to three and a half by eight and a half folded. And so I've got my panel here that goes um, just about to the edge. I think I left myself a very, very thin white border. It's barely perceptible, actually. And so I decided I'll just use the um, sort of the lavender colored flowers. And I wanted to offset my sentiment a little bit more. So I'm just going to glue that onto some scrap white cardstock so that I have a nice white uh, border around it. I think that's going to help it lift from the background a little bit and be a little bit um, more noticeable. And so I'll attach stems to all three of my flowers. Now they did turn out a little bit more, as I mentioned, a little bit more uniform than I would have liked. I was going for more of an ombre, but I think the the bottom most one um, probably has the most sort of um, color differential. I think, I think they look, they'll, they look okay, but I think it may have looked, may look a little better if there were more of a difference between light and dark. Um, so I'll have to play with this technique a little bit more just to, um, just to get the effect that I'm really going for. And um, and I don't mind that there's a mix of the two different ombres because I think two of my flowers are ombre from light to dark and then the other, the third one is um, cut, die cut from the panel that I ombre left to right. But I think that's okay. And where these stems meet up, I'm going to add the leaves 
to sort of hide those seams. And basically, once I get my sentiment attached here, my card is going to be complete. So really fast, easy card to put together. Um, I didn't want too much dimension on this, so I'm attaching the uh, all of the flowers flat. And I'm just using my low profile foam to um, just pop up my sentiment a little bit. I left some of the edges on the uh, leaves um, free and those aren't glued down just so that they can pop off of the card a little bit. I might add some 3D glue gel behind those to keep that dimension, but I kind of like how it is now. I hope that you like this card as well, and if you did, please consider liking, commenting, and sharing. Until next time, happy crafting, and have a fantastic day. Bye!